It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations. Of water seen on fire or land seen on the water. Of a water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes. Only because of him do the material universes. Temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes. Of nature. Temporarily manifested by the reaction with three modes of nature. Appear factual, although they are unreal. Appear factual, although they are real. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode. Which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. Which is forever free from the illusory representation of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. I meditate upon him, for he is is the absolute dharma projita kaitravotra dharma projita kaitravotra karamo nirmatsanam satam karamo nirmatsanam satam vedyam vastavam atra vastu vedyam vastavam astra vastu shivadam tapa trayon muvanam shivadam tapo trayonam shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite kim va purir ishvara ha kim va purir ishvara sadyo hridi avarudyate tra sadyo hridi avarudyate tra kriti bihi susu subhistakshana kriti bihi susu subhistakshana completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated completely rejecting all religious activities which are material motivated this bhagavata purana propounds the highest truths this bhagavata purana propounds the highest truths which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart which is understandable Standable by those bodies are fully pure in their heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. The highest truth, the reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity. It's sufficient in itself for God realization. It's sufficient itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? What is the need of the other scriptures? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam. By this culture of knowledge. By this culture of knowledge. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. The Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror kalitam phalam. Nigama kalpataror kalitam phalam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya sangitam. Sukhamukad amrita dravya sangitam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Pibata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Mur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. Mur aho raska bhuvi bhavukaha. O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. O expert thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desired tree of Vedic literature. The mature fruit of the desired tree of the Vedic literature. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although his nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Although his, his nectarian juice was already relishable for all. Including liberated souls. Including liberated souls. Shrimvatam Swakata Krishna. Shrimvatam Swakata Krishna. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Punya Shravana Kirtana. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidyantak Stohi Abhadrani. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. Vidu Nati Suhit Satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literature. 
to hear Hare Krishna from very glorious to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. Or to hear from him directly through Bhagavad Gita. It's itself righteous activity. It is self righteous activity. For one who hears about Krishna. For one who hears about Krishna. Lord Krishna is dwelling in everyone's heart. Lord Krishna is dwelling within acts everyone's heart. Acts as a best wishing friend. Acts as the best wishing And purifies friend. the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. And purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preshu bhadreshu. Nasta preshu bhadreshu. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Nityam bhagavata sevaya. Bhagavati uttama sloke. Bhagavati uttama in this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam. And from the devotees. And from the devotees. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. He becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Tadarajas tamo bhava. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Kamalo bhadayas chaye. Chete tar anavidam. Chete tar anavidam. Stitvam sattve prasidati. Stitvam sattve prasidati. By development of devotional service. But Development of devotional service. One becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. One becomes free from the mode of passion and ignorance. And thus, material loss and avarice are diminished. And thus, uh, avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso. Evam prasana manaso. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad bhakti yogataha. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Bhagavad tattva vijnanam. Mukta sangha se jayate. Mukta sangha se jayate. When these impurities are wiped away. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. The candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. Becomes enlivened by devotional service. And understands the science of God perfectly. And understands the science of God perfectly. Vidyate hrudaya grantis. Vidyate hrudaya grantis. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva samsaya. Chidyante sarva karmani. Chidyante sarva karmani. Drusta evat manishwari. Drusta evat manishwari. Thus bhakti yoga serves the heart not of material affection. Thus the bhakti yoga serves the heart not of material affection. And enables one to come at once to the stage of samsayam samagram. And enables one to come at once to the stage of Samshan Samagrama. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Understanding the Supreme Absolute Truth, Personality of Godhead. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna or from his devotee. Therefore, only by hearing from Krishna and from his devotees. In Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness. Can one understand the science of Krishna? Can one understand the science of Krishna? Srimad Bhagavatam. Canto 1, chapter 18, verse number 16. Savai Mahabhagavata Parikshid Yena Pavarga Kriyam Adabra Budhi Yena Pavarga Kriyam Adabra Budhi Yane Navaya Saki Sab Ditena Gyane Naveya Saki Sab Ditena Beje Kagendra Dvajapada Mulam Beje Kajendra Dagapada Mulam Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhakti Vinanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Sut O Sutta Goswami, please describe those topics of the Lord by which Maharaj Pariksit, whose intelligence was fixed on liberation, attained the lotus feet of the Lord, who is the shelter of Garuda, the king of the birds. Those topics were vibrated by the son of Vyasa, Srila Sukadeva, purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. There is some controversy amongst the students of the path of liberation. Such transcendental students are known as impersonalists and devotees of the Lord. The devotee of the Lord worships the transcendental form of the Lord, whereas the impersonalist meditates upon the glaring effulgence or the bodily rays of the Lord. known as the Brahma Jyoti. Here, in this verse, it is said that Maharaj Pariksit, 
attain the lotus feet of the Lord by instructions in knowledge delivered by the son of Yasudeva. She, Srila Sukadeva Goswami. Sukadeva Goswami was also an impersonalist in the beginning, as he himself has admitted in the Bhagavatam 2.1.9. But later on, he was attracted by the transcendental pastimes of the Lord and thus became a devotee. Such devotees with perfect knowledge are called Mahabhagavatas, or first-class devotees. There are three classes of devotees, namely Prakrita, Madhyama, and Mahabhagavatam. Mahabhagavata. The Prakrita, or third-class devotees, are temple worshippers without specific knowledge of the Lord. And the Lord's devotees. The Madhyama, or second class devotee, knows well the Lord, the Lord's devotees, the neophytes, and the non devotees also. But the Mahabhagavata, or the first class devotee, sees everything in relation with the Lord and the Lord present in everyone's relation. The Mahabhagavata, therefore, does not make any distinction, particularly between a devotee and a non devotee. Maharaj Pariksit was such a Mahabhagavata devotee because he was initiated by a Mahabhagavata devotee, Sukadeva Goswami. He was equally kind even to the personality of Kali and what to speak of others. So there are many instances in the transcendental histories of the world of an impersonalist who has later become a devotee. But a devotee is never, has never become an impersonalist. This very fact proves that on the transcendental steps, the step occupied by a devotee is higher than the step occupied by an impersonalist. It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita 12.5 that persons stuck on the impersonal step undergo more sufferings than the achievement of reality. Therefore, knowledge imparted by Sukadeva Goswami under, unto Maharaj Pariksit helped him attain the service of the Lord. And this stage of perfection is called Apavarga, or the perfect stage of liberation. Simple knowledge of liberation is material knowledge. And actual freedom from material bondage is called liberation. But attainment of the transcendental service of the Lord is called the perfect stage of liberation. Such a stage is attained by knowledge and renunciation, as we have already explained in Bhagavad Gita 1, 2, 12. And perfect knowledge, as delivered by Srila Sukadeva Goswami, results in the attainment of the transcendental service of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam Grantaraja Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Well, again, in one purport, Prabhupada has put so many wonderful points. We'll try and cover a few of them. First of all, that uh, the topics of Krishna, when heard from a proper uh, speaker who's a devotee and who's following the regulative principles and chanting the uh, Hare Krishna Maha Mantra regularly, uh, become very interesting and enlivening and gives people hope by listening to it. Hope that they too can become Krishna conscious. So that's why it's important to hear from bona fide devotees. If you hear from an upstart Mayavadi who uh, doesn't really understand who Krishna is, in fact rejects the existence of Krishna or thinks that Krishna is an ordinary person. By hearing Bhagavatam spoken by such people, one becomes contaminated. The complete opposite of what happens if you hear from a bona fide devotee. In one case, you become contaminated. In the other case, you become purified. So uh, everything is not equal. 
in spiritual life, uh, one has to, if one wants to be a, a, uh, a uh, good or effective preacher, they have to be able to see who Krishna is, who are the devotees, who are innocent or ignorant people, and who are the demons. And one as avoids the association of demons, is very merciful and kind and instructive for the innocent or ignorant, is uh, very uh, friendly and uh, offers honor or offers respect to devotees and who worships Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So these, this is the right attitude for a effective preacher. Above the, uh, the Madhyama Adhikari is Uttama Adhikari. They're Uttama, above all ignorance, above all uh, designations, above all prejudice. So they are, they see everyone as a devotee of Krishna. And they see everyone's relationship to Krishna. So that makes it a little hard for them to preach because uh, they do not discriminate. However, we see that Maharaj Prikshit was ready to kill Kali, the personality of Kali. But when Kali surrendered to him, he was kind to him. So uh, that means that he is actually a Mahabhagavat or a Madhyama, uh, a Uttama Adhikari, but he was able to function on the level of Madhyama also. But, uh, so just like, for example, when there's a war, uh, people who are very cruel, even though a soldier, enemy soldier will, uh, will uh, surrender, and ask for mercy, they kill him anyway. But the rules of, of engagement in war, even in war there are rules, if uh, an enemy soldier surrenders, you're not supposed to kill them. You take them prisoner. <laughs> then of course if they misbehave as a prisoner, then you might have to kill them. But uh, if they are submissive, then they are not excused, but they're put into prison or they're, but at least they're not killed or, or tortured. So uh, the, the case of Maharaj Prikshit, who was ready to kill Kali, but when Kali surrendered to him, he was kind and he gave him a place to stay. But then he also began to have intensive Harinam Sankirtan and festivals so that Kali could not find any place that they could stay. And so then Maharaj Brikshit uh, told them, wherever people go hoard gold, you can, you can take refuge there. <coughs> but uh, during the reign of Maharaj Brikshit, Kali could not find any place, even, even the place where they hoard gold. But as soon as he disappeared, uh, little by little, people started to uh, deviate, and uh, then Kali became very strongly uh, situated uh, until today, where uh, Kali has become overbearing. He's become very powerful. <clears throat> but yet, we see in the history of, of Ajamil that as powerful as Kali is, the holy name is more powerful. Because Ajamil just said the name of Narayana one time without any material desire. He just said it uh, simply. He was just he was calling his son, but, but he said the name without any uh, material desire or any type of uh, contamination. And he was purified of all the sins that he committed, and he committed a huge amount of sins in his life. So that's the power of the holy name. It's more powerful than Kali. So we don't have to kill Kali. 
we simply have to spread the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra and Sankirtan, then uh, the uh, Kali doesn't find uh, any place to stay when everybody is following Krishna consciousness. So, uh, in this prayer report, Prabhupada says that there are impersonalists and there are devotees. Both are on some kind of transcendental path. The devotee worships the transcendental form of the Lord, whereas the impersonalist meditates on the glaring effulgence or the bodily rays of the Lord known as Brahma Jyoti. Now, <laughs> the, the uh, impersonalist wants to merge into those rays, but the devotee, he prays. He doesn't mind a patrena satya sya pitam bukam tatvam pusam apavrinu satya dharma yadristaye. He says, oh my Lord, sustainer of all that lives, your real face is covered by your dazzling effulgence Kindly remove that co covering and exhibit yourself to your pure devotee. So here we see the Mayavadi wants to merge and lose their, uh, or deny their individuality in order to merge into the Brahma Jyoti, but the devotee is praying to the Lord that he removes that curtain or that dazzling effulgence that's blinding his eyes and he wants to see uh, the beautiful face of the of the Lord, where he says, "Pusan ikase yama namasurya prajapatya vyuha rasmin samuha tejo yat rupam kayana tamam tate pasyami yosava so purushaha sohamasmi." He says, "Oh my Lord, O primeval philosopher, maintainer of the universe, O regulating principle." destination of the pure devotees, well-wisher of the progenitors of mankind, please remove the effulgence of your transcendental rays so that I can see your form of bliss. You are the eternal supreme personality of Godhead, like unto the sun as am I. So we see that the devotee is praying that the Lord remove this curtain of light that's, that's, that's uh, uh, hindering him from seeing the beautiful face and the smiling face of the Lord. So that's the difference between the Mayavadis and the devotees. They have an opportunity to understand the individuality, personality, eternal personality of the Lord, but they refuse to because they have one overriding material desire, and that is to become God. So that's the last snare of ignorance. That's the most severe type of ignorance, when someone wants to be God. And therefore, they reject real knowledge of God, and they only take partial knowledge. And even that, they don't understand properly. And because of that, they fall down. So uh, the devotee of the Lord worships the transcendental form of the Lord, where the, whereas the impersonalist meditates upon the glaring effulgence or the bodily rays of the Lord, known as the Brahma Jyoti. So, in this verse, it says, uh, the one we're studying today, that uh, Maharaj Pariksha's intelligence was fixed on liberation, and he attained the lotus feet of the Lord. So, Usually, feet of the, the feet of someone are. Uh, I, I wouldn't say everyone's feet are disgusting, but usually people don't talk about so much someone's feet. You know, when you say to someone, "I love you," you're looking at their face, right? You don't look at their feet and say, "I love you." You know. So, but in the case of Krishna, it's different. His lotus feet are the destination of all great devotees. Om Tat Vishnu Paramam Padam. Uh, the, 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 all the demigods are striving to take shelter and surrender at the lotus feet of the Lord. So his lotus feet are glorified. There's poetry about the lotus feet of the Lord. Bhaktivinoda Thakur also has written a very beautiful bhajan glorifying the lotus feet of the Lord. So Maharaj Pariksha attained the lotus feet of the Lord by instructions in knowledge delivered by the son of Vyasadeva, Srila Sukadeva Goswami. Now, Sukadeva Goswami himself was at one time an impersonalist. 
He stayed 16 years in the womb of his mother because he said, I have no reason to leave this place. All places are the same. Everything is one, so I'll just stay here. Of course, that might not have been so pleasant for his mom. But, uh, but when the father, Vyastev, spoke, Srimad Bhagavatam, Sukadev Goswami said, Ah, oh, now I have a reason to go out into the world and spread the glories of Krishna. I didn't know this before, but now my father has enlightened me, and I will now uh, go out and, and teach this Srimad Bhagavatam to others. So we see that there is something uh, beyond the Brahma Jyoti. And there's Paramatma, and then there's Krishna or Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Paramatma is also the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but Paramatma doesn't play the flute. He doesn't dance with the devotees, with the gopis, and there's so many things Paramatma doesn't do that Krishna does. So although it's the same person, but the functions are different. So therefore, Sukadeva Goswami, when he heard about the beautiful form of Krishna and his, and his transcendental pastimes, he stopped being an impersonalist and he became a personalist. So later on, Prabhupada says here, first of all, he admitted that he was a Mayavadi. I mean, not a Mayavadi. There's, there's a difference between a bona fide impersonalist and a Mayavadi. Uh, Mayavadi's uh, claim there's nothing beyond the Brahman effulgence. So they don't accept Krishna or Narayana or the, or the or Vaikuntha planets or Goloka Vrindavan. They reject all of that. They think it's all fairy tales. But an impersonalist, he's like an agnostic. He says, I don't say there's anything beyond Brahma Jyoti. I don't deny there's anything beyond Brahma Jyoti. I just don't know. But I'm open to hearing uh, so when he heard his father speak the, the Bhagavatam, he became convinced. He gave up his imp impersonalism. Uh, it, let's say he, he stepped up from impersonalism to personalism, and he understood the real nature of, the, of Krishna and the spiritual world. So that's all by the mercy of his father. So he became a devotee because he was attracted by the transcendental pastimes of the Lord. So that's what we're trying to do also, to become attracted by the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, by hearing it, hearing them every day, and not only the Lord, but also his devotees. So we've heard about Yudhisthira Maharaj, now we're hearing about Pradikshit Maharaj, we heard about Kunti Devi, we heard about Bhisma Dev, uh, we heard about Narada Muni, so, and then the rest of the Bhagavatam, we're going to hear about so many more great devotees. So this Bhagavatam is considered Smriti and Bhagavad Gita. I mean, uh, and Bhagavad Gita also is being part of Mahabharata is also considered Smriti, although uh, it's spoken directly by Krishna, which, would, which should mean that it's Shruti. But the, most, but the whole Bhag uh, Mahabharata is smriti. Now what's the difference between shruti and smriti? Shruti, uh, and this is an important uh, differentiation to understand. The shruti shastras are directly spoken by the Lord. Usually it's uh, the Lord, in the form of Lord Narayana. And smriti is spoken about the Lord by great devotees. So, uh, Rupa Goswami has said, Shruti Smriti Purana Adi Pancharatra Vidin Vina Aitantiki Harir Bhakti Utpata Yaiva Kalpate. So it says that uh, devotional service should be performed on the basis of Shruti and Smriti. Why? Because the Smriti Shastras, like Bhagavatam, explain in more depth the philosophy given in the Shruti Shastras. So unless you refer to both, you do not, you do not get a clear understanding of the, uh, 
Vedic literature. Like, for example, Vedanta Sutra is considered Smriti, Shruti. But yet, to understand it correctly, you need to read Bhagavatam. Yeah, therefore, Bhagavatam is Smriti, so that you can understand it correctly without <coughs> any uh, misinterpretation. So what have the Mayavadis done? Sankaracharya wrote a, his own commentary <laughs> on Vedanta Sutra and misled people about what it actually means, you can say. But the natural commentary on Vedanta Sutra, Vedanta Sutra basically explains everything about Krishna without mentioning his name. So therefore, Sankaracharya took advantage of him, of that, by Mis giving a misleading interpretation of the Vedanta Sutra. But Vyasadeva, after writing Vedanta Sutra and so many other Vedic literatures, he felt dis discouraged. And what happened when, he, when his guru came, Narada Muni, he asked him, why am I discouraged? Uh, I don't understand. And Narada Muni said, well, you've written so many things, but you did not really make it clear who is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And you overemphasize Varnashram Dharma and, and thus misled people to think that by following Varnashram Dharma, uh, that is the, the uh, highest uh, pinnacle of spiritual achievement, but actually there's nothing, something much higher than that. And, and that is pure love and devotion to Krishna. But you didn't explain, you explained so many things, you sort of uh, buried Krishna in all that information. And it, so now, just write only about Krishna. You can, you can analyze everything else you've written, but, but direct it toward understanding Krishna. And then uh, your unhappiness will go away, and, you, and you'll be fully, not only satisfied, but you'll be ecstatic. So that's what happened. And it was so ecstatic that when he was speaking, uh, to uh, explaining the, uh, uh, to Maharaj, uh, um, breaks it. Uh, what happened? Both of them became ecstatic, the speaker and the hearer, because the subject is by itself full of ecstasy when you hear about Krishna and his transcendental pastimes. So this is an amazing thing that uh, we don't understand uh, right away. So there has to be Shruti and Smriti. Both are bona fide scriptures, and both are necessary in order to understand correctly. So Prabhupada explains uh, in the Civilization and Transcendence book, he says that the whole Vedanta Sutra is a description of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Okay. But he says, the so-called Vedantists, the Mayavadi impersonalists, are bluffers. They do not know what Vedanta is, but people want to be bluffed, and the bluffers take advantage of it. The two words combined in the word Vedanta are Veda and Anta. Veda means knowledge, and Anta means the goal or end. So Vedanta means the end of all knowledge, or Veda. Now, in the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna says, Vedais chasar viraham eva vedyam. Vedya. By all the Vedas I am to be known. So the whole Vedanta Sutra is a description of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But if you read Sankaracharya's commentary on Vedanta, you would not come to that conclusion. You see. The first statement in Vedanta is Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now, having attained a human birth, one should inquire into Brahman, the absolute truth. In a nutshell, Brahman is then described, Janmada Sayata. Brahman is the origin of everything. And in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Aham Sarva Prabhava, Matak Sarvam Pravartate. I am the origin of everything. So again, the Vedanta Sutra actually describes Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. It doesn't, it doesn't focus on an, only one aspect of Krishna, like the Brahma Jyoti, but Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is eternally a person, and from him emanates the uh, Paramatma, and also the Brahma Jyoti, and the material world, and all the jivas, 
in the material world. Everything emanates from him. So he is the ultimate goal of Vedic knowledge. But Sankaracharya thinks that's not true. And he misleads people. And, that, and the misleading of people is continuing to today. That's why they never attain real happiness and, and mostly they just suffer. So then Prabhupada says, so again, the Vedanta Sutra actually describes Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, because Srila Vyasadeva knew that in this Kali Yuga, people would not be able to study Vedanta Sutra nicely on account of a lack of education, he personally wrote a commentary on the Vedanta Sutra. That commentary is Srimad Bhagavatam, Basyam Brahma Sutranam. The Srimad Bhagavatam is the real commentary on the Vedanta Sutra written by the author of the Vedanta Sutra himself. The Vedanta Sutra was written by Vyasadeva and under the instruction of Narada, his spiritual master, Vyasadeva wrote a commentary on it. That is Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the same aphorism as the Vedanta Sutra, Chanmadasya Yata, and continues, Anvayad Itaratas Chartesu Abhigya so actually, the Vedanta Sutra is explained by the author in the Srimad Bhagavatam. But the rascal Mayavadis, without understanding Vedanta Sutra and without reading the natural commentary Srimad Bhagavatam, are posing themselves as Vedantas. That means that they are misguiding people. And because people are not educated, they're accepting these rascals as Vedantas. Really, the Mayavadis... Vedanta, Mayavadi Vedantas, they are bluffers. They are not Vedantas. They do not know anything of the Vedanta Sutra. That is the difficulty. Actually, what is stated in Srimad Bhagavatam, that is real Vedanta. So if we take Srimad Bhagavatam as the real explanation of Vedanta Sutra, then we will understand Vedanta, the end of knowledge. And if we take shelter of the Mayavadi Vedantas, the bluffers, then we cannot understand Vedanta. People do not know anything. And as a result, they can be bluffed and cheated by anyone. Therefore, now they should learn from this Krishna consciousness movement that Ved what Vedanta is and what the explanation of Vedanta Sutra is. Then they will be benefited. So, <laughs> this is uh, unfortunate, but it's factual. And Prabhupada, without Prabhupada's explanation, we would never understand this. We would never understand it. We would probably all be attracted to Mayavad philosophy without uh, contact with Prabhupada. <coughs> Why? Because it feeds the false <coughs> ego. Because it uh, supports the most profound ignorance. I am God. That's what they're teaching. And, and then, like, there's one joker who has a temple uh, now in Issaquah, used to be in Bellevue. He tells his followers, I'm not here to tell you that I am God. I am here to tell you that you are God. <laughs> Whoa. That's why he became so popular, you say, because all the people who are envious of God, when they heard that, they said, now this is real philosophy. He knows it's right on. This is what we want to hear. And now, and then, and then there are other, there's another big joker talking about the internal technology. Yeah. So, inner engineering. Inner, inner, inner yeah. engineering, right. Yes, so he's teaching people how to inner engineer themselves to become God, which he calls Shivam. So he makes a big phony uh, show of building a gigantic deity of Lord Shiva but his understanding of Shiva is Shivam, that is, uh, attaining the oneness in the Brahma Jyoti. And, and, and Shiva is just, is just a ploy, right? So the, the, the cheaters are getting bigger and bigger and better and better at cheating and bluffing the people. But if you read and hear Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita from a genuine devotee, you will not be cheated. Even in my language, there's a saying, he who knows nothing will accept anything. So, and Prabhupada just said the same thing. He says that uh, 
people who don't know anything about Vedanta, they'll become cheated. And, and, the, and the Mayavadi Vedantas are bluffers. They're not Vedantas, and they're cheating the people. So 90, I would say 98% of Hindus are uh, Mayavadis. All is one, you know. The biggest Mayavadi was Gandhi himself, who said, you know, uh, he said that the, all religions are equal. So the Muslims didn't accept it, but the Hindus did. <laughs> and, and you see, because of that, it's a hodgepodge in Hinduism. Hinduism itself is, is a hodgepodge. The name does, is, is not Vedic. It was a name given by the Muslims because they couldn't pronounce S so well. Uh, they said everything on the other side of the Hind River, it should have been Sindh River, uh, are Hindus. So there's Hindustani. They're Hindustanis. They live on the other side of the Sindh River. So Prabhupada says, to understand what is what, the first thing is that your destiny cannot be changed. Well, uh, in the purport today, it ex uh, Prabhupada says that uh, he talks about the three levels of devotees, Mahabhagavat, Madhyamadikari, and uh, Kanistadikari, or Prakrita Adikari. Okay, so uh, the, 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 the Kanistadikari is a worshiper whose specific knowledge of the Lord and the Lord's devotees uh, is incomplete, or it's with, he's without specific knowledge. That is the prakita, uh, prakrita or kanista adhikari, the lowest grade of devotee. He, he's without specific knowledge of the Lord and the Lord's devotees. Oh, that's a serious thing. What happens if there's a kanista adhikari, uh, if for one remains a kanista adhikari? Well, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita also. Uh, he does not, he, he thinks that there is uh, an elite n devotees who worship the deity and other devotees who don't worship directly the deity, they're lesser and their service is less. So this is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Let's see where that is. That is, okay, I'll find it in a second. Anyway, uh, such Kanista uh, Adhikaris differentiate uh, based on the service of the devotee. In other words, the devotee is washing pots. He's not as advanced as a devotee who's worshiping the deities. And therefore, this caste system evolves even in Krishna consciousness. <laughs> you see, <laughs> that's what happens when there are Kanista Adhikaris. They uh, differentiate not on the basis of birth, but on the basis of service. So this is explained in the the tenth chapter. Anyway, uh, they look down on the devotees who are not engaged in devotional service, and and thus that is detrimental to the progress of Krishna consciousness. I'll have to find this later on. All right. So, uh, however, uh, in the transcendental histories. The impersonalists, there are impersonalists who later became devotees, but a devotee has never become an impersonalist. Now, this is interesting. Prabhupada says, this very fact proves that on the transcendental steps, the step occupied by a devotee is higher than the step occupied by an impersonalist. 
It is also stated in the Bhagavad Gita 12.5 that persons stuck on the impersonal step undergo more suffering than achievement of reality. Therefore, knowledge imparted by Sukadeva Goswami unto Maharaj Pariksit helped him attain the service of the Lord. And this stage of perfection is called a pavarga. So there's, in Sanskrit, there's something called pavarga. pa pa ba ba ma uh, you, you have different, cons uh, uh, different lines of consonants, and one of those lines is the pavar uh, pavarga. So uh, this pavarga, it explains uh, the, the downward spiral of people who don't have proper knowledge of Krishna. So, pa, pa. So, pa means you work very hard, and pa means that you foam in the mouth from working so hard, and ba means that you develop fear, and ba means that you uh, become uh, uh, panicked and, uh, and deep anxiety and illusion and ma means death. So when people uh, work so hard for economic development, so hard that they don't eat right, they don't sleep right, uh, they don't bathe right, and they think that the ultimate goal is economic development and that'll lead to happiness and eventually this is the pavarga. Uh, uh, but the devotees are engaged in upavarga, not those things. And they attain eternal life because their work is self-realization. And they minimize their material needs and they maximize their involvement in spiritual uh, activities, devotional service, and in hearing about the Lord. And then... Uh, they are not in anxiety. They're not fearful because they know that the Lord is going to protect them as long as they strictly follow the rules and regulations of Krishna consciousness. And they have the highest benediction, that is the holy name of the Lord, and chanting Hare Krishna. So they do not become fearful. They do not become anxious. They do not become depressed. And they come closer and closer to Krishna by hearing about him every day, chanting his holy name, serving him, worshiping the deities, and they go back to Godhead. They attain eternality instead of death and rebirth again. So Prabhupada says here that uh, at this stage of perfection is called a pavarga, or the perfect stage of liberation. Simple knowledge of liberation is material knowledge. Actual freedom from material knowledge is called liberation, but attainment of the transcendental service of the Lord is called the perfect stage of liberation. Such a stage is attained by knowledge and renunciation, as we have already explained, Bhagavad Gita 1.2.12. And perfect knowledge, as delivered by Sri Sukadeva Goswami, results in an attainment of the transcendental service of the Lord. So, therefore, um, <coughs> this verse... Uh, anyway, the, uh, you get perfect knowledge, how? Vasudevi Bhagavati, Bhakti Yoga Prayochita, Gyanayat Yasavaira, Gyanam Chayat, Ahaitukam. By rendering devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, one immediately acquires causeless knowledge and detachment from the world. So, devotional service is not only worshipping the deities, it's also washing the dishes of the deities. It's also serving prasadam. It's also going on sankirtan. It's also distributing uh, Prabhupada's books. It's also chanting Harinam Sankirtan. It's also uh, coming to the classes regularly. It's also uh, witnessing the Mangal Arati, worshiping Tulsi Devi. All these things are devotional service. There's not just one type of devotional service that's superior to all other types. In fact, one lady devotee, after hearing Prabhupada emphasizing the importance of going on Sankirtan, she was in a little bit distressed and she asked a question. She said, Prabhupada, I'm a mother and I have a child and 
it's not easy for me to go on sankirtan. Uh, does that mean that I'm not really pleasing you? And Prabhupada said, your worship should be your child. And you should take care of your child and train your child to become a devotee. He said, if you do that, then you are connected to Krishna consciousness. So it all depends on, on the statements of the guru. If the guru accepts your service, then it's bona fide. And uh, so, um, especially a young mother with a young child or several children, they should be focused on taking care of their children very nicely so the children have no uh, difficulties or anxiety and protected and teaching them Krishna consciousness. Then later on, she can also go on Sankirtan with her children as, as some of the mothers do here when there wasn't this uh, Chinese flu, they were going out with a stroller with their kid and coming out on Sankirtan. So we see that the uh, six and Diksha gurus can explain uh, clearly what is acceptable and what is not acceptable. What is not acceptable is to develop false pride in thinking uh, one type of devotional service is superior to other types of devotional service. But what is acceptable is to understand that everyone working together supports Sankirtan, supports book distribution, because when the devotees come back to the temple, there's nice prasadam, there's nice arti, and, and so forth. So all these things are important. It's not that one thing is more important than the other. Okay, we'll stop right there. There are some other points, but we'll go over it tomorrow. We'll go over this purple a little bit more tomorrow. Are there any questions? Yes. So in, in, so in this, uh, so the Sukadeva Goswami four Kumaras are the two examples. Are there more examples of devotees that started as impersonalists and then became personalists? Yes. Many examples. Okay. There are many Proof. examples. Sutta Goswami himself was an impersonalist. Hmm. And he became a devotee by hearing Sukadev Goswami. We read that a couple days ago. There are many examples, not just one or two. The Kumaras were impersonalists. But by smelling the fragrance of the tulsi leaf on the feet of uh, Lord Vishnu, they became devotees. Okay, so what I wanted to read, I found it. And it says that uh, Jiva Goswami commenting on this verse says that Krishna in his plenary expansion as Paramatma is situated in the moving and non-moving entities as the super soul. So any neophyte devotee who simply gives his attention to the Archa Murti, the form of the Supreme Lord in the temple, and does not respect other living entities is uselessly worshipping the form of the Lord in the temple. There are three kinds of devotees of the Lord, and the neophyte is in the lowest stage. The neophyte devotee gives more attention to the deity in the temple than to other devotees. So Vishwanath Chakra Thakur warns that this sort of mentality should be corrected. A devotee should see that because Krishna is present in everyone's heart as Paramatma, every body is the embodiment of the temple of the Supreme Lord. So as one offers respect to the temple of the Lord, he should re similarly properly respect each and every body in which the Paramatma dwells. Everyone should therefore be given proper respect and should not be neglected. So the idea that one type of worship is better than the other type of worship, uh, as long as it's, uh, the spiritual master is accepted, uh, then uh, that's wrong to discriminate like that. So here it says that the neophyte devotee gives more attention to the deity in the temple than to other devotees. So Vishwanath Chakra Thakur warns that this sort of mentality should be corrected. So the, the graduate, postgraduate, uh, uh, let's see, uh, postgraduate uh, uh, position of a person who worships the deity is that they see the same deity in the heart of every living entity. If they don't see like that, then they're actually on a very low level. There are actually a kanista adhikari. And uh, 
Kanista Adhikaris, uh, who in insist on remaining Kanista Adhikaris, actually uh, detrimental to the progress of Krishna consciousness. Okay, so you had any other questions? This is ninth chapter, 11th verse, Bhagavad Gita in the purport. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, there are two questions online. Yeah. The first one is, um, can we have an example of bona fide impersonalist? Yeah, Sukadev Goswami, the four Kumaras. I explained, the bona fide impersonalist doesn't say, like the Mayavadi, that there's nothing beyond Brahman. They say, there might be and there might not be. I don't know. But if someone can explain it to me, I'm not adverse to it. Whereas the Mayavadis, they, they say, no, there's nothing. Kebala Advaita. There's nothing beyond Brahman. It's all nonsense, all fairy tales. That's the difference. Okay. And, and my second question is, um, why did Shankaracharya misled the people with his interpretation of Vedanta? I just explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. He was ordered to do it by Narayana in order to uh, get the Buddhists to leave India and uh, reestablish the authority of Vedanta. But to do that, he gave, uh, Sankaracharya gave a Buddhist like explanation of Vedanta. But he reestablished the authority of Vedanta, uh, of, of the Vedas, I'm sorry. Because Buddha had rejected the Vedas because the priests at that time were giving a false interpretation of it and making money. So because they were making money by performing animal sacrifices, which were forbidden in Kali Yuga, Buddha didn't want to waste his time trying to convince them to stop doing that. So he just pulled the rug under their feet and said, I reject the, if that's in the Vedas, I reject the Vedas. And then he started his own religion of, uh, of uh, Ahimsa Paramo Dharma, that the highest principle of religion is nonviolence. And, uh, to stop the animal killing in the name of religion. They were killing massive numbers of animals and when they were not able to bring them back alive, they said, this is Mahaprasadam. So they, they started meat eating as, uh, as part of the ritual. So he, he stopped that whole thing and basically the Buddhists became insignificant in India and Vedic. And then later on, once, after a thousand years, Sankara, uh, Ramanujacharya and Madhvacharya came and uh, uh, defeated the Mayavad philosophy. Thank you. If you want to know where it's explained in Bhagavad, in this Chaitanya Charitamrita, I'll, I'll, I can give that. I don't have it right now, but I'll give it to you tomorrow. Thank you, Maharaj. Okay. Yes. Maharaj. So, from the scriptures, is there any example of who has converted from Mayavadi to devotee? Yes. Prakasananda Saraswati has a lot of examples. Uh, Chankazi. Huh? Sarva Bhoma Bhattacharya. Yeah. Yeah, many, many examples. Well, he, was, he was the most prominent scholar at that time, Mayavad. Okay, thank you very much. We'll stop right there. All glories of Prabhupada.